Hi, in this session we will be learning about cephalosporins, how they are obtained, how is it acting, classification, all those generations, clinical uses and its antibacterial spectrum. Cephalosporins is very important for exam, though we don't like its examiner's interested topic. So, cephalosporin was first obtained from a fungus acrimonium, cephalosporium acrimonium. They are beta-lactam antibiotics having a nucleus, a specific nucleus called 7-amino cephalosporinic acid nucleus and this is the mechanism and action and resistance is very similar to penicillins. They are all bactericidal, basically killing of the bacteria and it acts by inhibiting the bacterial cell wall. We will learn the classification once. It seems to be a little difficult, but we will make it easier now. Now, first how to memorize these drugs. Let us look at it. We have 5 generations, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If you look at first generation, you will have oral and parental in almost everything, except the 4th and 5th one. First generation oral, you have something called, a mnemonic called Alex is thin. Please note this, it seems to be funny, but we have to somehow remember all these things. Alex is thin. So, what you do? Cephalex is thin. Cephalexin, Alex. Droxyl, somewhat similar to S. And Cepharidin, thin. And parenteral, no way you have to remember Cephazolin. It is even now in practice that Cephazolin is used in. Surgical prophylaxis. Very important. First generation parenteral is cephazolin, which is used as a surgical prophylaxis. Coming next, we will see fourth and fifth generation. Both of it doesn't have oral drugs. We have only parenteral. And for fourth generation, just remember a word called pi, cefepime, cefpirome. Pi, you have to remember pi for fourth and fifth, no, you have to remember roll. Ceftorolin, ceftibiprol, roll. So, one is over, four is over and fifth is over. Now, coming to the second generation, we will come to the second generation of the last. We will go to the third generation. Third generation is, first two drugs in oral will end at Zyme, Zyme, okay, Cephixime, Cephpodoxime, Ceftibutin. Next two will be over in 10, Ren, okay. And last is dinner. You have dinner at the night. So, last is dinner. So, Cephixime, Cephpodoxime, Ceftibutin, Ceftitorin. Coming to parenteral, please remember one rhyming sequence tax zox triax as peras you just tell it quickly so that you'll, you can get it cephotaxim ceftizoxine ceftriaxone ceftazidim cefeperazone and moxalactam is something single and coming to second generation oral a small clue for this is or cefachlor. This is asked many times in exam. Cefiroxime, acetyl, low carbef, and cefprozil. And parenteral, you have some four rhyming words. Just remember fur, tet, fox, met. You can pair up these clubbing words. Fur, fox, Tet met. So, cefuroxine, cefotitin, cefoxetin, cefmetazole. Now, memorizing is over. Now, we will just see how to exclude the options in exam, if at all it comes. Okay. See, first generation, all the drugs will have A. Obviously, your first word of, or of your alphabet is A. So, cefe, cefa. All this will come. A will come in all these. Okay. If you have Ceph, A, A, in that, it is first generation. 
but remember there is one exception and that exception is cephalosporin which is a second generation cephalosporin and third generation you will have one 10 me all the three are close to identify the third generation here also you'll have one exception which is cefuroxime which is second generation you just think only one thing exception is all from second generation okay me exception is cefuroxime obviously for fourth generation we don't we i don't think you have much problems you have to identify pi and fifth generation you you have to identify role we we'll look at the pharmacokinetics see pharmacokinetics you have classical ad me absorption so cephalosporins are administered either through orally or parenterally and then distributed it is almost distributed and it is excreted through kidney either by filtration or tubular secretions metabolism is they are metabolized in the body before their excretion and you have to remember two things here one is cefotaxim and cefoperazone cefotaxim is deacylated in the body before its excretion that you have to remember everywhere if you think of exceptions that's enough and cefoperazone it is mainly excreted through bile this is very 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 important this has been asked almost many times like cefoperazone is mainly excreted through bile and one more thing what we did for penicillins is we had clubbed penicillins with probenicid only to increase the duration same active tubular secretion of cephalosporins is blocked by probenicid so we resulting in higher blood levels and longer duration of action so coming to clinical aspect cephalosporins we have five generations oral and parenteral so every generation why do we want so many generations it's each generation it is susceptible to a different microbial target coming to the first generation we know it is active against gram positive cocci just remember as soon as you as soon as the oral microbial flora gets established you will have gram positive cocci like cephalococci it's easy to remember and cephalo cefazolin is the drug of choice for surgical prophylaxis this is important because we use it in everyday practice second generation this group of drugs is less active against gram positive but you will have gram negative coverage in this and especially you have to remember these three drugs met tet and fox remember fox met tet are active against anaerobes and this anaerobes they are very important to us because our flora is basically gram negative anaerobes and cefuroxime for your brain is like a fur so cefuroxime attains higher csf levels as compared to other second generation cephalosporins third generation is very important for exams because why because it's important for exams we get confused and examiners like it it is very active against gram negative organism which is resistant to other beta lactam antibiotics and the important feature is it will penetrate the blood brain barrier except they you again have an exception cefepirazone and cefixime you have an exception here and one next one ceftazidim taz tox and peras so all these three they are active against pseudomonas this is very important anti pseudomonal cephalosporins are third generation cephalosporins and one more one more disease which is important for this is melidiosis ceftazidim again ceftazidim and ceftazoxime has maximum activity against bacteroids already we saw bacteroids we have many activity in second generation and in third generation this zoxime has maximum activity against bacteroids and important thing is typhoid earlier days we were following ciprofloxacin for typhoid but now the 
therapy has been changed for ceftriaxone for typhoid. You just remember typhoid, T, ceftriaxone. They had tried ceftriaxone for typhoid. Just remember this sentence because this is important from exam perceptive. You have a bacterial meningitis which is mostly caused by gram negative spectrum like E. coli, sepsis, proteus, serratia, haemophilus. They are all causative of bacterial meningitis and this third generation is useful for prophylaxis of meningitis. And one more important thing is this triaxone. No? Everywhere triaxone is a hero either for typhoid and this is this causes something called biliary sludging syndrome. What is biliary sludging syndrome is basically it is it sludges all your bile, your cholesterol and calcium salts. So, it, this causes this precipitates to colithiasis in your liver and most of these drugs are reserved for very serious infections and ceftriaxone has longer plasma half-life that's why we, we use it in almost serious conditions and taxime is metabolized in, into an active metabolite desacetyl cefatoxime. Fourth generation you can remember only two things very simply they are active against gram negative spectrum including pseudomonas resistant to third generation cephalosporin C even third generation it's resisting their efficacy against gram positive is similar to third generation compounds but they are not active against anaerobes so forget fourth, cephalos uh, fourth generation cephalosporins for oral cavity you can go for rest of the three. We will see the antibacterial spectrum. Why is it important is in exams you will be asked like you have a bacteroids meningitis. So what will you give? Which generation cephalosporins? They will not give which generation. They will ask you the drug name. In that case this is going to help you. See first generation we had learnt it is a gram positive cocci. So gram positive cocci basically means it's streptococci and staphylococci. Second generation is gram negative bacilli where you have E. coli. Klebsiella, Proteus, H. influenza, Cateralis and Bacteroids. Important for us is Bacteroids. Okay. And third generation, everything is important. You can just star this. It's very, very, very important. Gram positive cocci, Streptococci and Staphylococci. Gram negative bacilli, if you look at Enterobacteriaceae, Serratia and Pseudomonas. Main is Pseudomonas. And Gram negative cocci, you have Gonococci and anaerobes you have bacteria almost it's a combination of every every generation and fourth generation is same as third generation so we'll be familiar with the frequently asked questions from this topics mainly third generation cephalosporins are a focus for examiners because of their bacterial spectrum antibacterial spectrum and even the drugs okay they will be either you will be having an organism there or they will be asking a disease and you have to figure out the third generation cephalosporins and cephazolin is for surgical prophylaxis this is the uniform and third one first generation is for gram positive cocci this is all about antibacterial spectrum this is for gram positive cocci second will be gram negative rots and third will be anti pseudomonal action plus you don't forget typhoid Melidiosis and you have another important thing biliary sludging syndrome. I hope the video was helpful for you. Thank you for watching the video. Happy learning.